Sometimes there are weeks when I really struggle to find a story for all ages that expresses the theme of the worship service. And I really do try to find something um, that's for all ages and, and isn't just for children or isn't just over the heads of children and for adults. So that can be tricky. On the other hand, sometimes there are weeks when I read a story and I think, you know, we can really just leave it there. That was a whole sermon. This is the second kind of week. I love the story, the rabbit listened. Thank you for whoever suggested that to me. What is there to say? What more is there to say about the power of listening, except that sometimes not only is it enough, but it is exactly what is helpful. I bet you have a story like this about a time when you were upset and you didn't need someone to talk, 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 talk like the chicken or tell you how you feel like the bear or remember exactly how things were or laugh about it or hide and pretend nothing happened or throw away the pieces or take revenge. You just needed someone to listen and be with you. And someone did. The most nurturing and deep relationships that I have are with people who can really, really listen. And who maybe have a knack for knowing when that's what's called for. Like the friend who um, I was going through a hard time several years ago and um, left the dance party of a friend's wedding reception to cry in the bathroom. And I had a friend who noticed and came and sat with me. And I think she asked maybe one clarifying question about, you know, are you upset about, yeah. Okay. Um, but I don't actually remember if we talked that much, but um, I remember that she stayed with me. Um, and even though what I had thought I needed was to be alone, when she was there, I didn't mind. I felt like, she was listening and it helped. Listening is powerful. And I have to confess that despite being a pretty quiet person most of my life, I'm not actually always a great listener. I'm trying to work on it. Um, between, uh, between being kind of an anxious person and my addiction to social media and Facebook, Sometimes my mind has a big problem just being quiet enough to really listen. Um, like in our reading um, from Henry Nguyen, um, quote, to listen is very hard because it asks of us so much interior stability that we no longer need to prove ourselves by speeches, arguments, statements, or declarations. It can also be hard to remember that listening is enough, that listening is powerful. When I was training to be a minister, I worked in a hospital for 10 weeks. And I remember part, part of that process is um, intentionally building reflection among the group of people who are becoming chaplains or becoming ministers. And I remember being expressing in our group session that I was jealous of another member because they had a particular ritual that they could do with patients when they were seeing them. You know, they could bring those things with them into the room. And I said, well, I'm jealous because I can't, I don't have anything to bring into the room. And our supervisor looked at me like I was the stupidest and was like, you, yourself, you bring yourself. Um, and I've also been on that, on that side when I didn't, I sat there and I, I didn't think I did anything. And somehow um, the person said, wow, that, that really helped. Thank you. Listening. So maybe the fact that listening isn't actually that easy is one reason that my most consistent spiritual practice over the last four years is a regular call, phone call I have with my spiritual buddy. She's a friend from San Diego who got this from, I think, a Buddhist community of hers and asked if I would be her buddy. Um, I think her old buddy had moved on and 
Anyway, our call practice is like this. It's a half an hour and it's just reflective listening with the vague topic of how is it with your spirit this week? How is your spiritual life? And one of us starts talking and the other one listens. Say it's my turn to start. I'll, I'll say like, wow, I've really been working with anger this week. Or um, I actually have no idea how it is with my spirit. I've sort of forgotten to check in all week. And then after a few sentences, I pause and she repeats back to me what she heard. And that goes for 15 minutes and then we switch. And that's it. I was a little skeptical about what the point of it was, but I, I wanted to try it and be supportive. And sometimes it just feels like talking and listening. And sometimes I hear something come out of my mouth that I would never have expected. Or I hear her say it back and I realize, wow, that's really true. Or wow, that's a really silly thing to think. Let's not worry about that. Um, listening and being listened to is really deeply can be so transformative. It's one reason I'm excited about our new adult faith development program we have at church this year called Wellspring, UU Wellspring. And deep listening is one of its primary practices and teachings. Admittedly, I'm new to the program too. I haven't gone through it as a participant, but I've heard great things. And this particular program asks participants to commit to, it's a pretty high commitment, um, for 10 months to commit to daily spiritual practice, small group meetings twice a month, monthly meetings with a spiritual companion, and then reading and other pre-work and journaling before the small groups. But at its core, the core practice is deep listening. So the work is based on, the program is based on the work of Parker Palmer. Um, so rather than being discussion groups, they, they draw their practice from um, this quote of his where he says, no fixing, no saving, no advising, no setting each other straight. Listening. And I'm hopeful that these groups will help us to go more deep um, into our own spiritual lives and also to connect more fully. But you don't need to be in some particular group uh, to practice deep listening. That's, uh, not everyone's gonna do a particular group or even a particular spiritual practice. And it's important to point out that deep listening doesn't have to always look like this particular, particular white Quaker model of silence and speaking that we're gonna do in the group. I'm always mindful when I'm talking about um, norms and that there's a danger of making sort of, in the US, there's this danger of making like white wasp conversation style into the norm and then saying everything else isn't really deep listening and, and I don't wanna do that. All we really need for deep listening, I think is a willingness, willingness to listen and to nurture both selflessness and curiosity. Um, selflessness in the sense that um, of openness that um, no one shares in our reading, quote, true listeners um, no longer have an inner need to make their presence known. They are free to receive, to welcome, to accept. Um, or not bringing up, approaching a conversation as a contest. Um, being able to set aside the desire to share what this brings up for you, which is so fun and is also a great kind of conversation to have. Um, to wonder. My favorite friends are people who seem genuinely and joyfully curious about me and what's going on in my life. And I'm genuinely curious and uh, joyful to hear what's going on with them. To quote our poem, my mind fireworks with unasked questions. Who is this miracle speaking to me? And who is this miracle listening? What amazingness are we creating? When I talk about um, curiosity and listening, I think I mean it's like the game of catch with invisible balloons that she describes 
in a poem, growing and shrinking, understanding, blooming. Um, listening curiously means setting aside the sense that you always know what you're catching, that you know the answer to your question, um, or maybe even the sense that letting go of the sense that you know what you're going to throw out there, what you're going to say. Um, a curious conversation means looking at the next moment with that kind of excitement and amazement and wonder. Our world is very hard sometimes. Um, we live in hard times. Um, and there's a way in which people are always living in hard times. But um, wise people teach that in times of anxiety, it helps to turn to curiosity and to wonder. So perhaps that's one reason that deep listening can also be a practice of nurturing deep calm. Um, so I'm hoping that in this time of um, anxiety and in this pandemic church um, year and, and all of the things that I named at the beginning of the service, that deep listening can be a way of grounding ourselves and um, acknowledging and then and moving past our anxious mind into our curiosity, into our wonder, and into our connection with one another. Because that's another one of the most difficult things about this time is the ways in which we are isolated. And that's a headwind of society that um, already exists so much in our dominant culture of isolation and disconnection and individualism. Um, and so I'm hoping that deep listening can be one antidote to that. Um, so this year, let's try it. Um, listen. Um, doesn't, doesn't have to be a whole complicated thing. Maybe call up somebody and talk and listen and wonder. Reach out. Be the rabbit who doesn't leave. Be the rabbit who listens to all of the frustration and the sadness and the laughing and the crying and the yelling and the desire to throw it away and the desire to put your head in the sand. And when the time is right, listen to the plan to build anew. What amazingness might we create?